Hey everybody, I know, traveling can be pretty scary sometimes. And something that I get asked a lot is whether or not you can be safe in the destination that you're going to. You know, a lot more people are traveling these days, and that means that there's more and more people at popular tourist destinations. And you know what else that means is that there's more opportunities for people to reach in your pockets or your backpack and take something that you might desperately need on your trip. So I'm gonna give you my top 10 tips for not only keeping yourself safe, but your belongings too. My number one rule of traveling and being safe is to just be aware of your surroundings. You know, a lot of people leave home and they just completely lose their brains as well. We get frantic and crazy and we forget the most important things of just, you know, looking around, being aware of what you're doing and being aware of who's around you. Most crimes are crimes of opportunity, so keep your cool, be safe, and be aware of what and who is around you at all times, wherever you are in the world. Tip number two, prepare for disaster. I know that might sound ominous, but it's pretty simple. You know, we have certain things that we need when we're, tra especially when we're traveling abroad, like our passport, our credit card, some cash, maybe a SIM card or a cell phone. Um, it's really great always to make photocopies of all of your important documents. I even go so far as to email them to myself. This way, if any of your things are ever stolen or if you're in some sort of natural or terrorist disaster, you know, someone else has this information that is going to be vital for you to get home safely. I also like to save all my itineraries, not only in paper form, but also to my phone and in my email in case I am ever in a situation where I've lost everything or I can't find it, um, I, I still know where I'm going. And that's really an important thing to do is to just keep all those documents in multiple locations, send them to a friend so that at any point during your trip, somebody knows where you are and how you can be reached and can get you out of any sort of situation that you're in if you get into one. So make copies of all those documents and keep them in a separate place than the originals. Rule number three is get a money belt. Men, I know a lot of you like to keep your wallets in your back pockets, but if you're going to be visiting places that are extremely crowded or have a lot of tourists, it's kind of just an easy way for someone to pickpocket you, especially if you're gonna be walking through places where there's a lot of people, a lot of people might be brushing up against you. It is ill-advised to definitely do that. Uh, money belts are great. You can either put them in your, like around underneath your belt, or they can hang like a necklace underneath your shirt. Um, I recommend putting, you know, some cash and like one credit card in there, most of your valuables, and then keeping a little bit somewhere else as well. It's pretty hard to rob you if you have a money belt. Uh, so that's a great option. If you don't want to get a money belt, I highly recommend in any case investing in a great travel bag and always only bring essentials. I have a great travel purse that I use by Travelo. It is RFID blocking. It's got a bunch of different pockets. I don't have it with me today or I would show it to you guys, um, but I'll try, try to slide in a photo right now and show you. Uh, this bag is great because I can actually fit my entire camera in there um, and everything else that I need, my mini tripod, my water bottle, you know, those are my essentials. Everyone's are different. And then if I'm going somewhere just walking around and I don't really need anything, I have just this small little purse that I bring that fits just some money, uh, my phone, and just kind of like day essentials, chapstick and whatever. Men, I know you might not want to wear a money belt, but there's another option if you're going to be carrying things. Um, a messenger bag is a great option. That way you can actually keep your eyes on it at all times, unlike a backpack. But whatever you do, I would highly recommend investing in a great bag. Make sure that it zips and has a secure closure. You don't want anyone to be able to easily reach in there. So tote bags are not great options if you're gonna be traveling to crowded places. And just make sure you always keep your eyes on your belongings. Number four, dress appropriately. And I really can't stress this one enough. There are many places around the world where Western clothes are not considered appropriate and they're definitely not worn by the local people. And one important thing about traveling is just 
it's important to blend in. It's important to try n to not look like a tourist. And if you're dressing extremely differently than the locals, you're already going to be a target for someone to potentially want to steal from you or hopefully not something worse. Tip number five, ditch the guidebooks. Now, I'm not saying that you should just never bring a guidebook when you're traveling, but I absolutely recommend leaving it at your hotel when you go out on your adventures. For me personally, I bring a guidebook or I research at home all of the places that I wanna go and any of the pages in my guidebook that I'm interested in looking at later, I take a photo with, with my phone, and then I can reference it anywhere that I'm going. And then you'll just look like a normal millennial with your nose in your telephone. Number six, use your head when picking a travel destination and don't visit hot spots. There are places around the world like North Korea, there's some countries in Africa, the Middle East that are just extremely dangerous for everyone, not just travelers. And I think it's really important that you, going back to the first tip, use your head. You know, if you wouldn't visit the dangerous place in your own city, then there's no reason why you should be searching those places out while you travel. Number seven. Remove large bags while you're in big crowds or on public transportation. There's been so many times that I've heard of people, you know, they've got their backpack and maybe a purse too, or just a backpack. They're either walking through a big, busy tourist square or on a bus, on a train, on a boat, and there's a lot of people and they don't take that backpack off, it's so easy for a crook to just slowly unzip a zipper and reach in and find whatever you got in there. So this tip has two parts. If you are carrying a backpack, make sure that you don't have anything valuable which that's in plain reach in your backpack. You know, if you do keep a second wallet or a second amount of money in there, a camera, make sure it's on the bottom underneath a bunch of stuff. And if you're going to be getting on a train, a bus, a boat, something like that, where it is gonna be really tight quarters, I always recommend take your backpack off, either put it on your front, or better yet, bring it down, put it at your feet, and hold onto it with one hand. Tip number eight, always have a safe zone. And what I mean by this is a lot of us are going around the world, wherever we're traveling to, sometimes we're attending festivals or parades, or really busy events. You know, in lieu of the recent attacks in Barcelona and earlier in the year Paris and other places in Europe, I think it is always really important to pick a place that is going to be your safe zone. If you're going to Rio for Carnival or Mardi Gras in New Orleans, pick a place that you can go for like a retreat. If you need to use the bathroom, if you just need some air, if if you feel unsafe, um, you know, there are so many things that you might just need to get out of the crowds for a minute. So pick a cafe or a restaurant or have a private table, a friend's house, something like that where you can go and escape the crowds and the chaos that's going on at whatever event you're at. Number nine, protect your luggage. Um, last year when I went to Portugal, I was changing locations almost every day. So pretty much all the attractions and places that I went, I had my big backpack with all my camera gear and a rolling bag, which is hard not only to maneuver to places, but especially if you wanna get some food or go to an attraction, it can be a little difficult sometimes with a lot of bags. So my tip number nine is just to always ask for luggage storage no matter where you go. Now, most places are pretty cool about it. You know, restaurants will store your bags in a front closet, hotels the same, but it's really important to always have your luggage in a safe place if it can't be in your room. Last but not least, number 10 is all about transportation. When you're traveling, you often have to get into taxis or Ubers. I pretty much try to use Uber now wherever I go or Lyft. Um, but if you are gonna get in a taxi, make sure that it is a registered taxi. It should have a taxi number on it and it should have a light, although some countries are a little bit differently. Um, 
And then always, always, always make sure that you ask the price before you get in and start driving anywhere. Uh, a lot of taxis don't have meters, but they will give you a rate. And some places you can even negotiate that. But if you wait until you've already driven to wherever you're going, they're probably or most likely going to price jack you. This happened to me in Nice uh, many years ago, but luckily I speak a little bit of French and I didn't believe when he told me that prices were double on Sundays. So always make sure that you ask the price first and don't get in unregistered cars of any kind. Uh, my second part of this tip is if you are renting a car and you have some of your belongings in your car with you, make sure that you always put them in the trunk when you're going anywhere. Uh, something that is very, very common in busy tourist areas is for rental car windows to be broken and things stolen. So always keep your things secure in your trunk. All in all, we are much more likely to lose something than we are to have it stolen. But I hope these 10 tips have been helpful for you. And if you just stay aware out there, traveling is no more dangerous than being at your local grocery store. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm Alice Ford and I'll see you out on another